We are ready? Okay. Good morning, everyone. For this session, you've had a choice between CSS Grid in English or PHP Auth in German. Language or content? Thank you for choosing language. I am honored to be your first international speaker at the Pentau Conference. Thank you for asking me. We're very kind of you. I am from Boston, the upper right corner of the United States, the same part. We like Obama, we voted for Hillary. <laughs> so, uh, so I am here today to talk to you about CSS Grid. And so uh, this is the fifth time I am giving this talk. Uh, and last September I was in Barcelona and I gave this talk. And it went very, very well. Lots of people tweeted about it. It was very exciting. And it was going so well um, until Twitter informed me that I was wrong. That I had gotten something very, very wrong about what I had said. And um, what I mean by that is if you look at my title with CSS4 grid here, uh, there is actually no CSS4. Did anyone know that? A few of you? I did not know that there was no CSS4. That in fact what they will do from now on is version parts of CSS. So CSS transforms have versions. Animation has versions. Flexbox has versions. Grid will have versions. There's no overall CSS for Okay, so that was wrong. Sorry. Uh, something else happened last September. HTML 5.1 came out. And in HTML 5.1, we have something that's very important to website designers. Does anyone know what it is? A new tag? The picture tag. Are you familiar with the picture tag? You've been using it in Pentel with picture fill. Now that's part of the CSS or the HTML specification. So maybe you are familiar with this graphic? Yay! It's CSS3 HTML5. I fixed it for you. <laughs> so that's what we work with now. So now we can begin again. I will tell you about CSS Grid. No four. How many of you enjoy CSS layout? Yeah? It's great. The European Space Agency put a probe on a comet, no problem. But CSS layout, terrible, right? We still have problems with it. And it's so important that we understand CSS layout because if you don't, it's a very long ride from the US to Germany. <laughs> a very, very long ride. And we know that in modern web design, we spend a lot of time trying to get the layout to work in Flexbox, maybe, before we give up and we go back to Flux. Uh, and of course, that's only second to trying to get it to work in Internet Explorer. <laughs> Good times. So, wouldn't it be great if it all worked? So briefly, to tell you a few things you already know, you already know a little bit about responsive design. This is the term, though, that tends not to be used correctly, at least in the United States. There's a very specific definition to responsive design, and it is this. There's a flexible grid-based layout, there are media queries, and there's images that resize. And this was described by Ethan Marcotte in 2010 in this article at Alyssa Park. Okay. And so sometimes the mobile websites, in Kintao, I think you have this, you have uh, a desktop version of the website and then a separate mobile, two themes, yeah? So that is technically not responsive design. It, it does look different on different devices, but this is the definition of responsive design. So briefly, <clears throat> the first thing that you've probably worked with are floats for laying out web pages. Floats are actually a hack. <laughs> you may not have realized that they're a hack. They were originally designed to take images and make text to go around the image. But we had to use them for layout. We had no other way of doing it except tables, which were also a hack. <laughs> so, uh, they all, of course, have rows and cells when you work with this in responsive design. 
The rows are responsible for clearing the floats on the cells. Are, are you all familiar with this type of work? So this is not new? Okay, good. The source ordering in the HTML, what order does the content come? That will determine the display. We can rearrange a little bit. The major disadvantage to working with floats are the different column heights. That's where we have problems with floats. So code might look like this. We have a row. We have some cells inside of it. Here's the HTML. Super simple. Yeah? Here's what our row code might look like on the left. This is simply a clear. It's a methodology for a clear if you look it up. It works across browsers. Here is the columns. They float, they have a margin, they have a width. So far, so good. Yeah? Good. When we put in a media query, we can make them smaller, then they stack on top of each other. Okay? And a different media query, they go even smaller. So far, so good. Here's where the problem comes in. If you have columns of different sizes, then we have crazy things happen. My students all go, uh, oh no, they don't, they don't understand what's happening. Uh, so it can be easily explained if you do understand how floats work, and you can fix this problem with JavaScript. There are many kinds of JavaScript to fix it. If you want to rearrange the columns, then you're going to do something with a position of relative, and then move the columns back and forth. Uh, are you familiar? With this uh, selector here for the CSS, you know this? Yeah, attribute selector. Yeah, those are really cool. Okay, <laughs> makes my life so much better. Okay, so then, so that's where we are. Flexbox works great across all kinds of browsers. How many? How many of you are now working with Flexbox? Good, good, good. Yeah, Flexbox solves a lot of problems. So yeah. Uh, these aren't really designed to lay out web pages either, though. We're still hacking. We're still hacking, okay? Not designed to lay out web pages. Uh, they are, they contain both a, a flex container and flex items inside of it. So you can think of that as rows and columns, although they have different names. So flex container, flex items. They are very, very good at vertical centering and equal heights. That's built into Flexbox, so this is a big advantage for them. Really super easy to reorder them, but the big disadvantages are this. Flexbox works best in so-called one-dimensional layout, where you have many images coming from a database. You don't know how many images, but you want them to be laid out on the page over and over and over again. Flexbox, very, very good for that. Uh, but it's not designed for a two-dimensional page layout, header, footer, and columns. It does not actually do well with that, although we can hack it to do it, and I'll show you that. Uh, the, and the browser support and the syntax can be a little bit challenging. Here's the reason why. There are three versions of Flexbox. Oh, no. So in 2009, we had one kind of syntax that came out. We could have solved the problem in 2009. Imagine how much easier your lives would be today. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, someone came along and said, oh, I don't like the syntax. I'm rewriting the whole Flexbox spec. So they re rewrote it in 2011. This is called the tweener syntax, as in in between, because it comes in between the actual adopted syntax and the earliest syntax. Does anyone know? The tweener syntax, but there's one browser that supports this. Anyone know what it is? I, not IEH, but, but on the right track, IE? 10. 10. Only IE 10. <laughs> uh, what, are, what browsers are you supporting? Does anyone have to support IE 6? <laughs> 7? The U.S. government still supports IE7. It's very, very sad. IE8? Sometimes. Okay. You're kind of out of luck with all of this. Sorry. IE9? A few more? Oh, IE10? 
Ah, uh, okay, that's where we are. Okay, ID 11? No ID, we're done! <laughs> oh, one day, one day. <laughs> one day ID will be gone. <laughs> okay, so you may still need to use some prefixing with Flexbox, especially if you're supporting ID 10, and it does not work in ID 9. In fact, here's, here's the support for Flexbox. So, uh, some bugs in IE 11 and Edge, but everybody else pretty much supports it. Okay, so if we want to make Flexbox work with a grid, here's the way we have it. The HTML, exactly the same. So we have a row, which is now the Flex container. We have a series of columns, which are the individual items. Okay? The CSS, of course, is different, so on the row, this is where we declare that this is Flexbox. So the way Flexbox works, you declare it on one element, its immediate children are the Flex items, but no further is the Flex property inherited. So on the element, one level in, and that's it. Okay? Otherwise you have to declare Flexbox again. And this is what the, uh, the code might look like for that row. You can change the directions of the rows, you can reverse things on the rows, and so forth. If we want to change size, we work with what's called the flex basis property. So instead of saying width, we use flex basis. Width is an absolute number. So if your screen is this big and I say 25%, if your screen is this big and I say 25%, it's always the same amount, right? For Flexbox, this is different. These numbers are uh, sort of pretty close. So if the math doesn't quite work to get you to 24%, maybe it's 25% or 26% or 22%. It will be close with the other requirements that you have. So it's somewhat forgiving in that way, which is what we've wanted for so long, right? How many times have we gotten our math wrong on our floats and then things wrap to the next line and we have to do more math? So Flexbox is a little bit more forgiving this way. <laughs> and we can rearrange columns very easily. Just change the order. Okay. So now that you know all of that, finally, CSS grid. Okay. Why CSS grid? <sighs> Finally, it is a specification, it is, uh, has been released, it is in Chrome and Firefox and Opera and Safari now, all released in March this year. So it's brand new release. Prior to that, it was in the development versions of those browsers. You don't have to have any more row markup, which is great, less markup. It is designed to work in two dimensions. How many of you are so old you remember table layouts? Yeah, this is what I like about Kuntal. When I speak in the United States, I'm one of the oldest people in the room. Here, here we're all the same age, it's great. The kids in America, they don't remember the table-based layout things. So you remember row span and call span, similar kinds of things with grid. Uh, you can use, the best, the best recommendation now is to use Flexbox for those individual UI elements, like a series of images, or a series of small bits of content, maybe the image with a little read more link. Uh, those are very good for use with Flexbox. Grid is best for the overall page layout. And here's a picture for that. So see, Flexbox works on rows, this row, that row. Sometimes it wraps when you don't expect it to. Um, and then here with CSS Grid though, you can lay things out exactly as you want. And there's your row span and your call span. Okay? The problem, of course, is browser support. So, as I said, the full support, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera, uh, iOS Safari, Chrome for Android, Firefox for Android. Partial support. Microsoft browsers. <coughs> oh, that was such a surprise. Uh, so these are actually based on an older spec for the grid. IE 10 and 11 surprisingly supported grid, but it was a very early version of the specification. 
So it's a little bit out of date, some things have changed. And then finally, no support, interestingly, in lots of mobile browsers. Okay? But if you think about it, that may not be a tragedy. <laughs> okay, because with your mobile browsers, how will you likely lay out the web page? One box on top of the other, yeah? And with Grid, the HTML can look exactly like that. So you actually may not need the mobile support. It doesn't support Grid, it just displays things one on top of the other. Okay. And you can read about it at CanRUs. All right, polyfills. There are polyfills if you want to use this now. So uh, there's one based on the old spec. There's one based on the new spec. So you can plug these into your website and get some compatibility with Grid. <laughs> there's also this new um, construct called at supports. Have you heard of this? So this is a test you can do in your browser. Does it support a CSS transform? Does it support animation? Does it support grid? If it does, it can execute the code. There's a not version, there's an and and an or. Okay, so you can write and, and work with at supports. The problem is, if you're working with an older browser, it does not support at supports. <laughs> so you put your new code in at supports and put your old code outside of it. Okay? The drawback to doing this, now you lay out your web page once with close, and you lay it out a second time with grid. Hmm. I might be more interested in the polyfills. Okay, but that exists. Okay, so here's how the code works this time. Now we have a wrapper, and we have our inside our individual cells. Notice each one now has its own class, because we can specify where each cell of the grid will go on the web page. Okay, so your code looks something like this. Display grid, and the grid gap, the distance between the cells and the grid. Okay. Then where is each cell going to go? We count. So column one goes from one to two. So from one to two. So the column goes from one to two. Make sense? Two to three, three to four. How about this one here? What is its value? Four slash five. Okay. Make sense? So if we have uh, something like this, okay. So we can also specify the rows in the same way. So we have the column, say for column one here, it goes from one to two, but it goes all the way down from one, two, three. Right? So one, three, to make it go over the two rows. Right? Okay, there is an alternate syntax for this. In fact, there are several kinds of alternate syntax. I like the numbers. I think that's very easy. But there are other ways that you can write grid, and you can read about them here on Rachel Andrews' website, gridbyexample.com. She has many, many examples. You can learn a lot from looking at what she has done. So if you don't like the numbers or you think the numbers are confusing, there are, you can name your grid areas. This is the header. This is the side. This is an article. This is a pull quote. You can name them whatever you want. And uh, there's a syntax for writing that. But I don't want to overwhelm you and show you every kind of syntax. Then you know nothing when you leave. So we're going to learn one syntax today. You can read about the other ones, okay? Uh, reordering is very, very simple. Let's say we have the same type of layout here. We have a wrapper, and maybe we order our HTML this way, which is best for search engines, best for accessibility. Yeah? But we can make the layout look exactly like this. And I have, this is where I go to code. So, uh, I will show you some examples. If you want to follow along with me, here is the URL. If you can get on the internet, good luck. 
Uh, this is the URL for the GitHub, where you can download the code for today, and uh, my favorite picture right now. <laughs> we are actually going to build a Mondrian painting in CSS Grid. We can do that. Uh, so let me show you the code example here. So a few things. Um, first of all, okay. Can you, can you read the text in that? Good. Okay. So here we have. This is the HTML. Uh, we have a header. We have an article. We have an aside. Okay. If I put this in the web browser. Looks like that. Very, very simple web page. Watch this. Wow, huh? <laughs> we changed it completely. I don't know why you would ever want to do this. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> okay? So you can change it completely and then from mobile, just stacks on top of each other. Pretty nice, huh? Okay, so the CSS for this looks like this. So uh, we display grid, we have a 10 pixel grid gap. We have a little padding, a little border radius, we have some colors, and then the interesting part is the media queries. So here we're just simply stating where we want the grid cells to go. Just tell it the grid column and the grid row. We change it through a different media query. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah? Yeah. Who's happy? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you can do this. Okay, so now I have a, a much longer demonstration for you. So what we are going to do, perhaps you're familiar with this painting from uh, Piet Mondrian, who's a Dutch painter in 1930-ish. And I have put letters on his painting, sorry, uh, so that we can follow what we're doing. This is what we're going to build, okay? Uh, so what I have here for the starting files are, here it is, HTML, very, very simple, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Here I have the CSS to start us, okay? From the word wrap. And so here, uh, for the moment, I have a width and a height set because I want this to uh, look a very certain way, to look like the painting. And then uh, the painting is the background. And then the divs, very simple, a border, a background color. I made it opaque so we can see the painting behind the divs, which are on top, right? So if we put this in the browser, This is what it looks like to start, okay? So now we're gonna write the code. All right, so I'll give you a hint. There is a grid row and there's a grid column, okay? For each of these, and what I want you to do first is look at A, B, and C. And I want you to think about what are the right numbers for the grid row and the grid column for A, B, and C. Don't worry about the width. Don't worry about the width. I just want you to get the right shape to start with. In other words, two boxes stacked on the left, a bigger box on the right. That's all I want you to do right now. If you don't have a computer in front of you and you don't have the files, just write on a piece of paper. Take a couple minutes. And think about what are the correct numbers for A, B, and C. Go ahead. <laughs> you didn't know you were coming to Harvard today, did you? <laughs> yes, I'll show you the picture. So it's grid row and grid column. Those are the two you should think about. And here is the picture. And yes, please talk to each other. Help each other. 
If you're having trouble, the first thing to do is to count how many columns, how many rows. How many columns, how many rows, and then start to think about the numbers. Does anyone need some more time? We're good? Okay. How many columns? How many columns? Columns go this way. How many columns? Three. So one column here, one column here, one here. How many rows? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So that is very important to know. Then, so how did your numbers come out? For this one? One slash two. Good. This one? One slash two. Okay, so we'll check and see if we're doing it right yet, huh? Did anything change? No change yet. Okay. How about this one? Two slash three. Good. And how about the grid column for B? One slash two. Good. And for C? One slash three. Yeah. One slash three. Remember it goes from? One, two, three. So, one slash three. Okay, and the column? Two slash three. Two slash four. Two slash four. That's what I have. Okay? I have all the answers. <laughs> okay, so... Oh no, that is true. We haven't defined our grid. Um, if anyone sees what I'm doing wrong, let me know. Oh, yes, thank you. I forgot that part. Uh, now I know what you're saying. Yes, display grid. That's a problem. Um, guess what? It doesn't work if you just say grid rows and grid columns. Doesn't work. You gotta add this other part first. Uh, grid, or display grid. Okay, the other thing I'm going to add here is a grid gap. Now, uh, the grid gap, if you look at the painting, the gap is inconsistent. Here it is very fat, here it is more narrow, kind of fatter over here. So we'll get close, okay? Uh, we can't make it the same throughout the, using this method. Now, if you want it to be exactly the same, you can make more boxes and make this more complicated to make it perfect, but we're gonna do pretty good. Uh, so the grid gap, after lots of testing, will be 30 pixels, uh, 20 pixels. And this is just like the rest of CSS, so uh, top and bottom, left and right. Yeah? Okay. So, now this will work. Uh, we go here to Firefox, and refresh, and there we go. So, uh, now we have, we have uh, these two here, and the bigger one, and it looks like I probably made a typo somewhere, maybe? No? Let's 
doesn't Yeah, it does look right. Uh, the the <laughs> D, E, and F look different. So I'm a little confused by that. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, right shape. We have A and B and C next to it, which is very big. Okay, so now that we have that, let's do the same thing again for D, E, and F. Work together. What are the right numbers for D, E, and F? Show the picture again. Yep. <laughs> D, F, and G. All of the last ones. <laughs> yes. We will have some background colors. But if we put them in now, we can't see the painting. The picture beside the road? Sure. <laughs> like this? Okay. And we'll put this one on the top. There we go. This? Okay. Okay. Another minute? Are you good? You ready? We have answers? You are all so brilliant. Okay. So let's look at where we're going to go. That's the answers. True that. Uh, here we go. Red row, red column, and copy here. Okay, so what are our numbers for D? 3, 5, and 1, 2. Good. How about E? 3, 5, and, and 2, 3. Good. For four, or sorry, for F, three, four, and three, four. Okay? And for G, four, five, and three, four. Good. Okay? Now we will refresh. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. And so easy, right? You've never had it this easy before. Okay? So we have the right shapes. Yeah? Looks pretty good for the shapes. Wrong sizes, wrong colors, but the right shapes in the right places. That's actually the hard part. Okay? So now, uh, the next part is figuring out how to change the widths on each of those cells. Okay? And so, what I've done here is this. Okay, so what I did was this. You all know the web developer toolbar? Yeah? So, in the web developer toolbar, it has a nice ruler. Okay? And you can take the ruler and you can make some measurements. How big is A? And it will tell you. You can zoom in. And it will still tell you the right numbers, which is even better. So I can go like this. And uh, it will tell me the measurements up on the top. It tells me the width and height in pixels. Okay? Now, Pixels, not ideal for responsive design, but let's at least start with that to see how that works, and then we'll do another change to something that will work a little bit better and be a little bit more responsive. So, this is like a cooking show. You know, they take the raw turkey and they put it in the oven and they say, wait three hours, and it looks like this. Okay? I've already done all these measurements for you. So I already know what all of the widths and heights of all of the columns and the rows are. And so now what I need to do is specify that. And the way I've done it is this. Up here in the wrapper, 
we're going to add two properties, grid, template, rows, and grid, template, columns. Okay? And then we can list the values for the rows and for the columns. Okay? So the numbers that I have are 170, 170, 210, and 61. And 61. And then for the columns, I have 124, uh, 376, and 42. 42, a good number. <laughs> okay? So I just specified that. Now when I come back to my website, if I save the CSS, refresh the page, here we go. Close, yeah? Pretty close. So not perfect, okay? And the reason it's not perfect is that we have uh, issues with our grid gap. An inconsistent sizing with the grid gap is going to make this not line up exactly perfectly. Uh, and the other part of it is there's a better unit of measure to use than pixels for this. Okay, there's a better unit to use. And so I'm going to introduce you to this one, which is called FR. FR. Uh, FR, like that, like French. <laughs> okay, this stands for fraction. Fraction. So this is a unit only used in grid. I don't think you can use it elsewhere on your web page. And it's one fraction of the page. And you can have as many fractions as you want. So if you have 10 fractions, that's the width of the page. If you have one fraction, that's the width of the page. If you have two fractions, that's the width of the page. You can work with as many or as few as you want. So uh, Marcus, yesterday in my workshop, discovered that all we have to do is this. Instead of using pixels, all we have to do here is change this to FR. That's a lot of fractions. But it works. All we have to do is change this to FRs. And we'll get an even better result. It's moved over a little bit here, so uh, there we go. Not quite so much gap over here on the side. See how that lines up even better? Very nice. And the rest of the problems here are due to problems with the grid gap. Uh, the other thing that, that Marcus found was that we can use margin on these to, to jiggle the boxes around just a little bit more to make them perfect if you are going for absolute perfection. By using margin, you can um, make, make the, the boundaries here move just a little bit more and line up exactly perfectly. But we're pretty close. And I'm going to call it good enough. Okay, close enough. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Thank you, thank you. I my you can be very poor if you go for perfection every time. You know, do it, bill it. It's pretty good. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so now what we need to do is simply add some colors. Just add some colors. So what I'm going to do now, we don't need the painting anymore. We can get rid of that. And we'll swap that out for a background color of black. Then, uh, then we have colors, of course, for C, D, and G. Red, blue, and yellow. I haven't tried to get the exact shades. It'll be close enough. You can, of course, do that if you wish. So for C, uh, background color of red. For D, a background color of blue. And because it's hard to read black text on the blue background, let's also set the color to white. And then um, for G, the background color of yellow. Okay. 
pretty good. And then um, I forgot one thing, which is the opacity. Get rid of the opacity. And it'll be even better. There we go. Sweet. We made a million dollars. We'll sell it for a million dollars. Great. So that would be pretty hard to do with any other way in CSS. But with Grant, we get in here in 15 minutes. Sweet. Okay. Everybody ready for the bonus round? Okay, so the bonus round is this. <laughs> Let's do a media query and flip it upside down. Oh, whoa, right? You can do this. So when we, we can just write a media query and say, at some point, we're going to make the whole painting turn upside down. No transforms. <laughs> That's too easy. You can rewrite this with grid and you can flip it upside down. Does anybody want to try this? Should I give you a few minutes to work on numbers? What do you want me to show you? Show us. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I did to do this, I'll just show you the CSS. Uh, okay, so down here, then we can add our media query. I return a few times. Okay, so we have a media query. And then, uh, then what we're going to do is this. For the wrapper, we're going to set our grid uh, template rows and our grid template column basically to what we had. But what do we need to do to these values? Yes, we need to switch them, reverse the order. Oh, you you thought negative? Yeah. Truly negative? Okay. I thought. Uh, it might be possible. Uh, negative fractions, maybe. I, I haven't tried it. But but we definitely need to reorder this. So uh, 61, 61, 210, and 170. And then for the grid template columns, it'll be 42. 42, what was that, 376? And uh, 124. Nope, sorry. Is that right? Yeah, 376 and 124. Okay, so we've got that. Um, and just to prove to you that it flipped, I'm going to make the painting ugly. Uh, we'll make a background color of green instead of black, just to prove to you that the media query actually works. No, no tricks up my sleeve, okay? Uh, then we have a long series of our values and where they come from rather than type them all. I will just copy them for my solution here, so you don't have to watch. Okay, so all we have to do then is redesignate where is everything going to be, okay? The colors stay in the same places. We're just changing our numbers for our grid rows and our grid columns, okay? And then we can write one more media query. Say uh, 750 pixels. Watch this wrapper. All we have to do is this display block. Oh, because the HTML is already as we want it, it's already stacked. There's nothing to do here but change our display from grid to block. And if you want, you can change your background color again. We 
make it orange. Because I can. Okay? All right, now, here's the interesting part. When I come to my HTML here, we refresh. When I start to narrow the screen, oh, it actually worked today. It didn't work before. My Firefox wasn't updated. It was a bug before. I actually had to go into responsive design view, you know, where it shows you the black background and the little thing to slide. That was only the only place where it worked. It works here today, so this is good. Uh, so there, there it is. We flip it upside down. And there's mobile. What do you think? How many of you are going to go home and use this right now? Okay, so that's, that's what I had prepared for you. Let me show you just the last few slides so that you know where to go to get more, uh, more things, more references, and so forth. Uh, so once again, that code example is on GitHub if you want to get my code and take a look at what I did. I have for you some recommended resources if you want to read more about this. Uh, always CSS Tricks is good. Always the um, Mozilla Developer Network is always great. Note that in Firefox there is a CSS Grid Inspector. It comes with Firefox now, so you can use this. As you start to learn Grid, you can use the inspector. And then, uh, so finally, just to wrap up, my current recommendations are this. If you have to have browser support, you can't go wrong with floats. So just because this is new doesn't mean you have to use it. Sometimes the old ways are the best ways. I know, it's shocking. I said it in a technical conference. Uh, so floats, still a very valid way to lay out web pages. So you can't go wrong with that. If you don't know Flexbox, it's time to learn. Time to learn Flexbox. It is going to be in Bootstrap 4. The grid layout that comes with Bootstrap 4 is based on Flexbox. It's already based on Flexbox and UIKit. It is uh, possible to base on in, uh, Foundation. Do you all use Foundation here? Is there a foundation? Yeah, so that actually has a SAS variable that you can toggle and recompile it to, to uh, Flexbox. You can start using grid now if you use some kind of fallback, the polyfills, add supports, whatever it is you want to do. And, um, but realistically, you might want to wait another year just to get all the bugs out of it, get some documentation written, get some more examples out there. Uh, about a year, I would expect, it will be very usable uh, for everybody, but be aware that it's coming, okay? And so, finally, the slides are available online at slideshare.net slash web. And thank you again for having me.